Okay, let's get our episode started, but paused at the zero second mark because we're going to press play at the same time on the count of three. Is everybody ready? Oh, yeah. Ready. Yeah. It's first time. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody, get ready. And here we go. I can find my remote. Sorry. You have the timer up? Oh, I forgot about that. It's okay. A lot of us kind of forget about that at first, too. I always forget the time. There's a lot to think about when you're hosting and doing a preamble and getting your episode ready. And being able to like hold the remote and the timer button at the same time. <laughs> okay, you guys ready now? <laughs> yes, I just have. have to put the timer, right? Yes, yes that's it. Okay, perfect. On the count of three. One, two... Three. In every oh wow! They really did replace that guy. Yeah, they did. Oh, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> so this season, you can do a Giles preamble instead. John, you're making me hungry with the snack. Oh my god, I thought I thought that I was okay. that I was muted. Sorry about that. Yeah, I love yo-yos. <laughs> I loved them when I was a kid. Or someone someone's a little jealous, I think. Yeah. How did Angel not see that dude, like, right behind her? He was very focused on her. <laughs> Apparently. She's going to have to use his weapon as a stake. There we go. Uh oh. Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein. I'm calling it right now. It's some sort of a Bride of Frankenstein themed episode, like, you know, drawing on some of that. I guess I just really enjoy seeing people fall in holes or <laughs> off stages because I laughed so much when she fell just now. <laughs> Yeah. 
as dancing. I'm dancing. You're dancing? It's that theme song, yeah. It's to. a great theme song. I, I was love just the gonna song. say it's pretty criminal to like not at least, you know, head head bomb or something. Oh yeah, I do that every time. Look, John, he's practicing asking somebody on a date. I feel like Xander's shirts are more normal this season than they were in season one. Yeah, I don't like it. I accidentally paused my episode. Um, so what, what time are we at? Five minutes. Thanks. Kendra, it looks like Giles is your mat. Yeah, excited over grave robbing. <laughs> I kind of dig it. No pun intended. <laughs> I didn't even no, think good. about that. Who all likes my theory that the, that this has got some Bride of Frankenstein throwback or call shout out? I would love that. Absolutely yeah, I mean, not. I mean, assembly like some assembly required. That's kind of Frankenstein-ish, you know. It, it was a woman's shoe. Also, I wasn't saying absolutely not to you. I was just very disturbed by the camera. You don't want him shooting a picture of you like that, running in your face and taking a picture with Not without consent. That's a little creepy. I don't care if you're for the school paper. <laughs> Card deal, <laughs> layout. Cracks me up. Oh my gosh, somebody's episode is so synced with mine. Is mine too loud? Yeah, whoever's just whoever's I just heard that with Cordelia speaking was like so eerily flawlessly on sync with mine. Did you guys hear that creep? He said it's for my private collection. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> Everybody's got a dark room. Like in whoa, 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 whoa. Did, wait, wait, wait. Did you just yeah. hear what he said? Yes. He just said yeah. she's alive. She's alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness.
That's what I thought. Because Frankenstein would require more than one body. So you're thinking zombies, Lily? Yeah, because Frankenstein is multiple pieces from multiple different people or things in one person. And zombies is just a lie from the dead. Yeah, but how do you... How do you explain that line, she's alive? It's a zombie. <laughs> they die, they come back. Zombie, she's alive. Yeah, no, but she's alive is like one of the most famous, like one of the most famous horror movie lines in the history of horror. <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Is it Bobby the one with that, super strength? <laughs> Come on, that's bro. sexy dance. Willow is so forgiving. <laughs> I love Willow. <laughs> she knows her sport. All right, there we go. Now we've got a Frankenstein. <laughs> Neither one of them was. Oh, I always like that shot. Yeah, it's from the credit. You know, if that <clears throat> grave had been dug up, wouldn't they be able to tell that it was dug up? I mean, it would be the it ground was, around there would be completely dug up. It was only a week old, so it was like a fresh grave. Those girls were killed a week ago. I bet before. a zombie's gonna come get her. I bet this is where Cordelia becomes a vampire. <laughs> Always walking <laughs> alone. Prediction time. every episode. Someday he might get it right, Hunter. He says it every episode. <laughs> Five bucks, she's gonna drop her keys. Her shoes are totally wrong for cheerleading. Especially in the 90s, like, come on. Yeah. We knew better. Yeah. Also, those were big shoes. Those are kind of Frankenstein-y type shoes. Oh, come on, that is Frankenstein. That is Frankenstein. That is Frankenstein. That is Frankenstein. By the way, it's Frankenstein's monster, just to be clear. Uh, actually, Frankenstein. That was the name yes, of the it is. Of the, That's the name of the doctor. Of the doctor, I know. Oh my gosh, it's very. She's shiny. so dumb. Look at Frankenstein. Isn't he pretty? <gasps> I knew it. I thought that looked like David. To be honest, <laughs> not Frankenstein. I cannot believe Cordelia crawled in a dumpster. I mean, when you gotta survive, oh, you do together. I would. I like how Angel's wearing like kind of more nerdy looking clothes for Angel. You know, is he trying to compete with Xander with that jacket, or what's? Where's his long black coat? She's a great screamer. Yeah, you gotta hand it to her. 
<laughs> yes. Nice. <laughs> Check out Cordelia. Golly, Cordelia, with those hands. I mean, this is this is silly. What is she doing? Yeah, Cordelia. Yes. I think she's trying to act like a damsel in distress. Parts, I guess. What would you use parts for? You would pick hmm. the most yeah. perfect parts from. You'd each. pick the part, and then you would maybe sew them together and vaguely familiar. Make a, vaguely familiar. Make something. I'm trying to figure out what it would be, though. I'm trying to a figure out. Lily, could you help me? Could you maybe help no. me on this one, Lily? What What do you think it could be? Shut up. <laughs> Or maybe they're taking the tastiest parts, just like eating them or something. Who knows? You're still hoping yeah. for the flesh eating demon. I don't know. I have to say though, I have to say that the I wouldn't have gotten it without the without the title of the show. So the title of the show does spoil you if you yeah. if you're thinking in that mode. By the way. You're always thinking in that mode, though, John. It's like your writer brain thinks about stuff like that. All Maybe, but I mean, you know, if this is your genre, you probably would be thinking in that mode. Like, you know, if you're a if you're a horror person, I would imagine you know all of those tropes. I'll tell you, back when this aired on TV and I watched it, if I didn't have the TV guide, I didn't always know what the name of the episode was when it aired. I never knew. Oh, that's a good point, it. though. That is a good point, actually, that you wouldn't know, yeah. I've never paid more attention to the names of episodes since I started watching this with you guys. I've known, like, two because they're really famous, and that's that's it. Hush, you know. Mm -hmm. Fan candy. Maybe he's feeding his mom like girls to keep her like. Uh, you are tr you are trying hard, Lily. You are Lily really... is really hoping for. <laughs> you're a really eating you're people. really like you're you're no. hoping for like a last no. minute Just, win. <laughs> I'm saying I don't know. I've seen that where like they go out and like, they have to like kill people to keep their parents alive because they're like some sort of creature i've seen that in like other shows so i'm like i don't know it could be a thing i will say that they do a pretty good job of hiding it early in the episode i that was some of my, some of my problems with season one was i felt like early on in the in the episode you kind of know what's going on like like for example Miss French, you know, you kind of know she, what, what's going on with her from like the beginning. Whereas here they did a pretty good job because they had him really like l make us feel like this was about zombies. And I think that they're, that the flow of this is they're doing a really good job of getting it to what will eventually be Frankenstein's monster. They said Grey's Anatomy Ooh. and then I saw the book and remembered this was the night. Uh, hello. Grey's Anatomy oh, yeah, is a book. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's a this medical is... book. This is also kind of like a little bit of a nod to weird science, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it is, right? But, but not yeah. as comical. Not as comical. <laughs> this is creepy. Whoa, these two creepers. These two creepers. What? I had a feeling that like this photography kid was like so random and intrusive in the very beginning that he had to be part of like something. Oh my god, shut up, Sam.
Poor Willow. He's standing there holding his books like he's waiting for it. Gosh. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, I love he's it. So sea smitten. He's smitten. A smitten kitten. Doll. He didn't want them to leave him alone. He's got butterflies. <laughs> Did she say Miss Calendar is my father? Father, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Poor Giles. Uh, she knows he like he he she Ooh. knows he likes her. The irony of this is that in this conversation is when he could have said it instead of talking about saying it later. Oh, I feel <laughs> I feel awful because she's gonna die. But wow, she's gonna what? Die. <laughs> what are you talking no about? Sure, she's not big, gonna become a vampire. It's going to be tragic. Whatever happens, it's going to be tragic because it's just too good. It's too good to be true. They're making us love it too much. Hey, Cora. Cora. Hello. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Hi. Carl, how are you? I'm good. I found out that y'all are watching Buffy. So I was like, let me slide through. Yes, thank you. Do you need a timestamp, Carl? Oh, no, someone already gave it to me, but thank you for asking. Awesome. The head. Oof, when the monsters, when the monsters are just people. Yeah. Oof. That's when it gets real scary. That's when it's the scariest. Like when, because when the monsters are, are real. Monsters yeah, are always could, real. To, right. But, humans are real and humans do do this kind of thing sometimes. And like monsters can't control themselves. They're monsters, Whoa. but humans make the decisions. What kind? What is that, Lily? What is that? <laughs> Some kind of zombie thing. It's a zombie. Uh, but, you know, he, 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 but, he, I mean, look at he, he got cut up from his fall. That's why Faith looked like that, guys. He's risen. Look, he. 
Wait, but look at this. Apparently, that's what a rock climbing accident does to you. This is the most articulate. <laughs> this is the most articulate Frankenstein's monster yet. Twenty six minutes, Regina. Or oh, twenty. Wait, twenty five. Wow, real poet there. Oh, they did the like a baseball. Well. Uh, did is he that play baseball? is that his actual brother? Is that the idea? Yeah, that's his brother. Yeah, that's Daryl who died in that rock climbing accident or whatever it was. He and Cordelia mentioned song. she was dating him at the. And what is it that he needs exactly? He he needs it to he needs to have a wife. Is that the idea? He needs a companion. Like, well, I'm gonna be dead forever, so might as well get myself a dead woman to stand with me. I he guess. doesn't want to be alone. She doesn't like the regular people that are monsters either. That's what they are ghouls. Those are one of the things that eat uh, dead people. She needs to talk to someone. I'll... That 30 year old man is supposed to be 19. <laughs> That's very funny. I guess death ages you a little bit. I guess. <laughs> Possibly steroids. You never know. <laughs> you never know. She's going to get bopped in the back of the head.
nice choice of words that she's the apex when the guys are trying to make her the head. Of the- yeah, so much poetry this episode. What you're doing is wrong. Wrong, just wrong. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know how I feel about the like sentimental music here on a character who's just, who's literally like Mm -hmm. gonna try and kill somebody. You have to love Cordelia's resilience, though. She just got attacked with a bag overhead, and she's like, no, I have to. Oh. Baseball is a national pastime too. So. I was just gonna say baseball is the national pastime, but I didn't want to offend anybody who <laughs> doesn't who doesn't feel that way. I agree with Giles. Not gonna lie. In my part of the country, football is king. Yeah, but it's technically not the national pastime. No. Are they going to try to take Willow now? Humanizing the monster who wants to behead the cheerleader. Yeah, the music again. I'm sorry, I can't do it. But then it changes. I can't feel bad for him if it wasn't at all his idea. But since it's also his idea, go back to your grave. I think the only reason his brother's doing it is for him. So it had to have been all his idea, really. Well, yeah, no, I mean, like, if his brother brought him back and just wanted to get him someone to be with him always, I would feel bad for him because he didn't ask for it. But he's asking for this. So. By the way, just just a side note, I cannot remember the last time that I drank out of a, out of a cone cup, out of one of those little cone paper cups. Hmm. No, I did at the doctor's office recently. Yeah. 
<laughs> I was gonna say that the dentist's office I think I had some not long ago. Is it weird that I can remember the exact time I drank out of one last? <laughs> wow. <laughs> the appropriate response. Right. Was he gonna was he gonna just like hit her with that thing? Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh uh, okay. Oh my gosh, like also kind of smug. <laughs> look, look, look the way he's standing. <laughs> he's like he's just like, hey girl. Yeah, he's like but yeah, he's like butts kinda out, you know, he's like <laughs> he's like, hey girl, yeah, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> The fact that that guy even threw it, like, threw the knife and it actually did spin. And then he ran. That was it. That's all. He could have just, like, moved to a different, like, state. And someone would but have just been like, oh, you're fine. You were an accident. I love you anyway. Like. This could have been easily solved. You don't have to kill anybody. <laughs> no way, Lily. <laughs> you don't think his grayish skin would have given him away? I mean, if you find a red person, they wouldn't care, right? Am I just like... So optimistic. optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> I think his personality may have prevented him from finding anybody. But he's changed. You didn't hear him? Oh. He appreciates things now. I did not believe that for half a second. <laughs> this episode is goofy. <laughs> yes. It is goofy to say the least. <laughs> I love but, this stuff. But I will say it is a fun episode. <laughs> <laughs> I love this whole fight scene when the, she rolls over Cordelia and then they all come and try to I gotta say he's got great like joint movement for like a dead person i mean his brother is obviously smart he did a good job he's just gonna burn up with his almost finished burn. john you were partially right it was almost a bride of frankenstein yeah i mean i was 150 percent right that's what this episode was about <laughs> But they didn't finish, so we didn't get to see her. I think that's a shame. <laughs> <I'm drunk. laughs> 
<laughs> I think he's happy that it, there's no master, though. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. But I, I, I know that happiness will be short-lived. This is just a red herring. The master will return. Yeah, I was going to say, is it because the master's <laughs> coming back, so it's short-lived? Is that what you're saying? So how are they going to explain it to the coroner? All right, that's his job. No one else is involved in it. They're going to go on a second date. They're going to go on a second date. Look who date. didn't die. Okay, look at Xander's jacket or shirt, and then look at Angel's jacket. It's kind of like Xander's in this one. Oh, that's his shirt, so I suppose just dirty. <laughs> oh my. no but were we supposed were we supposed to want him to go on a date with cordelia i mean come on All right uh she just wanted to thank him though and he's like not even paying attention to that i think xander and cordelia would make a very interesting pair xander is disgusting <laughs> oh Carl. I love him. I'm in. I'm in. The, I'm in the the same camp with you, Coral. Why are you I'm the actor party? alone? Right. It's cute for now, though. Yeah, John doesn't like Xander because of the uh, hyena episode. The that's tainted him already. I never liked him, so that's because you ain't got no taste. You like the master, so no, I Lily. She... <laughs> look, look. I'm gonna be dead honest. Come fucked up your taste because <laughs> she got taste. Fender is not it. <laughs> Just keep watching. That's all I'm gonna say. Just. Keep... This group is kind of split, Carl. Some people like Xander, some people they don't Are wrong. care from a whole lot. <laughs> and that's that on that. <laughs> it is kind of a fun episode. Well, I will, I gotta say, that episode, I, I it is a goofy episode. It is a, really silly episode with a lot of stuff that you can snark about but i was engaged the whole way through there wasn't a single moment where i was bored so that says a lot yep yep it's a good month for really, the week episode then i'm really disappointed though because you didn't Why? get to see her right the assembled girl right I wanted to see her in her full glory. What if? It, would you have been cool if it if it had? Because uh, I was thinking it was going to stand up without a head. Oh, that oh. would have been <laughs> awesome! How would that happen? <laughs> so Ken Kendra, like when we watched American Horror Story, John Kendra was all about the uh, the boy parts pieced together. Episode. Oh my god! <laughs> so it did not yes. surprise me. Hey, did not surprise me that she was into. I love that, that season, but that is so well. disturbing to me. It turned out pretty well in the end. <laughs> For who? You do, to see, you do get to see that guy. <laughs> Kyle <laughs> Kyle was, by the end of it, he, he was good to go. It just, you know, took a little bit of time. Oh, Kendra. Just imagine what Ryder Frankenstein girl would have looked like. Oh, <laughs> she's... Oh. You can draw her, and then you can see her. You're talking about this one. I thought you were talking about the traditional Bride of Frankenstein, because she's gorgeous. No, th this particular mm. show's piece together, girl. I can't imagine. Well, it would have had Cordelia's head. 
It would have had Cordelia's head. That actually would have made me sad because I have grown to to like her. MJ, what'd you think? <laughs> it's a good episode. Like, it was silly. But like John said, I was engaged the entire time. And even though that this was my second time watching it, I was still engaged the entire time. You had to be prepared for the discussion, right? So you had to pre-watch this particular one. Yeah. And I have some really good ideas for, some, for a memento for it, too. Ooh. Nice. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I got a question. So, they didn't piece him together with body parts. That was just him, right? Yeah, right. that was just him. So, so he's a zombie together. and she's a Frankenstein monster. Bada bing, bada boom. Both well, right. Well, yeah, I mean, I no, I mean, they zombie. had... No, they had Pete... They had... I mean, he was stitched up, so they... Get, with gave, his own pieces. Maybe with his own pieces, but maybe with some other pieces of some other people. No, it was his own pieces. Let's get that right. He's a zombie, <laughs> and she's Frankenstein. Are you? Monster. You're, and you're Both absolutely positive about that. Okay. Relax. I'm right. Hello. Sure. Daryl and, Chris, <laughs> Daryl, Daryl and Chris talk a little bit about mm -hmm. how Daryl says to Chris, "You brought me back, and now I need somebody," kind of thing. So we kind of get the impression that that is Daryl, just all stitched back together himself after his accident. Like he was all cut up and gnarly, probably. Because did you see the? metal rod in his arm when they were in there right before the fight and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't think that they would have gotten other body parts to fix Daryl up. I think they were just doing that for the girl to make him the perfect girl. Yeah. I think that they were making the perfect girl and also the girls that they had were from a car accident. So I assume that some of their parts were uh, damaged and that's why they kind of had to piece them together too. I just mean, to he was pretty yeah. damaged. He was just being real yeah picky i mean you're already dead bro just take what you can get <laughs> come on you can't be chopping people's heads off take the dead girl over there and get over it come on you know mr high and mighty white jock football dude deserves best even after he's dead <laughs> yeah that is that is kind of the, that that is kind of the theme we're getting here right i mean it, it did exactly. feel a little bit like that um yeah, all of that sentimental music, uh, you know, kind of humanizing the characters was uh, that 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 was the part of the episode that I thought was a little like, eh, yeah, like is, they had this is just, from the nineties. Yeah, they had just attacked Cordelia, and they're playing the the sentimental music over him, but they just like she in, leaves the room like, oh, I have to go. So we're supposed to be like, oh, Cordelia, her priorities are all messed up, and they did it twice. Yes, yes, and that and that and that like that is just. There's no question about it that like that was that that was written in the that was like in the writing specifically to make you feel sorry for them and that's mm -hmm. that's I don't know how you I don't think you, I don't think they <laughs> well I think that back then back in the nineties probably plenty of audience members like wa why he's like oh I miss football but let me go oh, be I didn't I didn't feel me. bad for Daryl I think the only one of those three guys the zombie guy and the other two that felt any remorse for what was happening was Chris like he felt guilty but he felt like he had to do it. And yeah, yeah, I didn't really feel bad for him. I still think he deserves to rot in jail. But I think that's where we're supposed yeah. to like think Buffy's trying to sympathize with him to get information out of him and make him tell her what's going on. So she's trying to be all nice to him. But and Hunter took to the point of Cordelia. I kind of think that we're supposed to get the impression that she now understands what happens in Sunnydale. And as long as Buffy's around, she feels safe. So she's just going to go back to doing what she's doing. Yeah. As because she's already been attacked, like in season one, she was like the victim a couple times, and yeah, I I just kind of think that's what we're supposed to think, but maybe not. Oh, with Cordelia. Oh, I always thought. Yeah, with yeah, Cordelia. like Cord Cordelia. Oh yeah, Cordelia is the victim. She's... No, but what I mean is Cord Cordelia gets attacked, and then Buffy saves her, and then she's like, "Oh, that's the fight song. I got to get out there," and she runs back out to go do her cheerleading. And mm. it seems weird because she had just been attacked and most girls wouldn't want to do anything after just being attacked. But Cordelia. She's like, Buffy got it. Yeah, she's like, Buffy has it. It's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really hope Cordelia gets turned to a vampire because that would be great. She's like a really mean and vain person. 
And then she'd have to, like, look at herself with that, like, big old werewolf nose. And she'd be very sad. She would never really? change to her vampire self. She would always just stay her human. Yeah, Wait, what are you talking about? Have to. What do you mean, wh- big where werewolf? They got the they got the big bridge like, and the nose. And Lily thinks Instead that the vampires look like werewolves. <laughs> We're the vampires. Oh. I'm, sorry. I'm like, what? I'm just gonna say this. They got that big like bridge on their face. Lily, like, I'm just gonna say this about awesome. Cordelia and her storyline. Just keep watching to find out what happens next. Well, I still hope she turned into a vampire. If what do you she did, she wouldn't. What do you think that's? What do you face. think's gonna happen next, Carl? What What do you think is gonna happen? He's next? seen it already. He's seen it. He's seen yeah, it. Yeah, I watched the whole series because my family was obsessed with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I was like, "Why y'all so obsessed with this show?" And I watched it, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I get it." <laughs> isn't that the um, same? Yeah. Isn't that what? Isn't that the same thing that you said about Gilmore Girls? Are all of the, all of these shows you your family was obsessed with them and you and you all like all nineties and early aught shows? Well, yeah, because most of the most of the entertainment stuff that was carded that was that was garnered towards me and my age group was like cartoon shows from Japan. So like most of the stuff that y'all would be rewatching, I'm like, oh, well, I watched it because my mom had it all on DVD. My mom has a lot of TV shows on DVD, so like. Except not stupid shows. She told me she doesn't buy stupid shows. So that's all I know on that one. So she has Buffy, Gilmore Girls, basically anything that was on the WB. That's why I'm so obsessed with the WB. I saw that impact very hard. But yeah. Yep. WB was the only station doing stuff for us. It sounds like your mom it sounds like your mom should join us. Oh no, she would not do that. She does not like people. (laughs) <laughs> oh no! Oh no! That's like my mom. Are annoying as hell. Honestly. Oh no! <laughs> that is funny. My mom is I mean, the type of person. My mom has been out here taking care of people for a long time. She don't. She does not need to be talking with more people that she doesn't know. Oh my god! That <laughs> reminded me of when. <laughs> Of when Lorelai's banging on doors and that lady opens the door. I don't talk to people. People annoy me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that killed me when I first watched Gilmore Girls. That was hilarious. <laughs> well, Carl, for for this watch with the Buffy, about half the people on the couch have seen the whole series. And about uh-huh. half of them haven't seen anything but what we've watched up to till today. I have seen so nothing but what we're we've really watched. careful when we're talking about. Oh yeah, I, d- yeah. Spoil- That's why I was nervous about because I was like, I think half of the people here haven't seen Buffy. That's why I just keep saying just watch more because the thing is that it wouldn't even be right to spoil because for with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it really is a series where you just have to watch it to know what happens. I would not recommend reading the comic books. But you know, if you want to, you can. Don't. But don't. Cause they come after the series. The com- most of those comics that people know about are like technically season eight and on. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it's very sexual. But anyway, so like the 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 seasons that you're gonna watch with for Marcus, like like season because I think this is the second one right now. So like season one to season seven, they're really really good, and it actually is a really good series that holds up. Um. And it's, it was actually really interesting to watch this episode over, you know, after not seeing it. I think, like, when I binged it, it was, like, 2008 or nine when I binged it. And just comparing the the writing and the dialogue to, like, writing and dialogue to what we have on TV now, it's like, wow. Back in the day, it really was geeky. Like, how Buffy talked when Angel popped up and she was like, you can't just jump up at people at a graveyard. You gotta like make some noise or something. I'm like, that's what a geek would say. <laughs> it's like it's like it's very easy to to point out like what is kind of like geeky dialogue or what's something that's said to someone that you know isn't just always around people all of the time compared to how it is now, where like you see the dialogue of TV shows. Like if you watch an Insecure or something, most of the characters don't talk like that. So yeah, it's it's really really interesting um, to to I don't know to rewatch it today after seeing so much and just being like wow this this is really what we were what we were um, um, eating up in the nineties but it still holds up it's still really good. Mm-hmm. I'm loving it. I have a I'm having a blast. I John, is this your fun. first time watching it? Oh yeah, I've never seen anything. John. Yeah, so it's like the first time for John, Regina, Kendra, MJ. 
Nancy. Uh, Jonathan, Nancy what did you watch that was on the WB? And some of the people down on the Bean Bay. So just so you know, when this show was on the air, this was this was the this was the mid nineties. This yeah. was what what year would this be? 97, 97, 97. 99. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I I had just graduated from university. I, I mean, TV was just the last thing, the last thing that I cared about. I, I didn't watch any television. I was a theater actor, theater actor. The theater, the theater. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I just didn't, I just didn't watch it. I, I don't even think I had a television. I, I didn't have a television like right out of right out of of college. Um, you know, I didn't watch television until Lost. Like, I just didn't watch any television. I mean, I, I watched it as I watched TV as a kid. I was like really big television watcher like 80s television watcher like all yeah. of the all of the 80s sitcoms and 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 whatnot um and then when i you know then like when i was like a like a late teenager i just stopped watching tv completely and just got more into just hanging with friends and then i went to to university and it was a it was a theater school and you know film and television was kind of frowned upon a bit you know you, there was just this like little bit of a peer pressure to just be really into the art of theater and maybe like be get into like art house film maybe like if you were going to get into any type of film um and that was sort of that was sort of ingrained in me for the four years that I was at school and then I got out of school and for the first you know for, for the, the four years or three years after school i was just focused on on you know theater and like you know and that and it wasn't until i moved to los angeles that i even started to care about film or television or any of that stuff from a professional standpoint but even then i wasn't watching television i mean i i didn't watch gilmore girls i got cast on gilmore girls in 2002 and i wasn't watching anything including that show that i was on and it wasn't until Lo- I started watching Lost, which I didn't even start at the beginning. I, I got into Lost, like, I'd say, like, two or three seasons in. And that was the show that got me back into TV. And I got into television, and I just started watching, like, tons of stuff, like Amazing Race and, you know, Dexter. And, you know, and, and, and then got really, really, really into television. And, and, uh, and then, of course... Uh, as I transitioned out of acting and into into writing, that was also what I was doing was writing film and television, um, and mostly like inspired by all of the stuff that I was watching in the in the mid aughts, mm-hmm. um, early and mid aughts. So no, this like would have completely it. W- this was during a period of my life when it's not like I was like that I thought that this show was like above me it was just more that i just didn't think television was something that uh, like i was really all that really interest interested in but i do remember some friends of mine being really into this in- including some writer friends who uh who i you know who, who i admired then and still admire admire today and are still in my life today i remember them watching the show and saying this was shortly this was shortly before I moved to Los Angeles it was like on a on a on a vac- like a trip that I took out here to visit my friends who were already living out here including Sean and Gunn and 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 others that I went to school with Judy Greer and um and I remember um talking to this friend uh, actually, it was Sean's brother, his brother Brian, who's a screenwriter, um, uh, has written a few things that you probably have, probably would know. Um, and he, I remember him telling me this must have been ninety eight, maybe or so. It's probably this, when I this came season to visit. is ninety seven, ninety eight. Yeah, this one would have been in the fall ninety seven into ninety eight. Yeah. Okay, then so it would have been ninety. Then it was probably ninety nine. It was probably ninety nine. I came out and visited, and and I remember him telling me that the best thing on television right now is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He's like, it's just like, it's just like no contest. He's like, just no contest. It's the best thing. It's so engaging. Like, you know, every episode is like, and, and he was trying to, he was trying to like even kind of give me a little gist of why. And, 
And I was like, oh, okay. Like, but I mean, you know, at that point, I it just that kind of entertainment experience just wasn't something that like got me excited. It was mm -hmm. it wasn't until Lost that like, you know, I got really into the idea of like episodic storytelling and like, you know, what's gonna happen next and figuring out like the you know the clues piecing things together the larger narrative mm. but you know probably if this had come out in like the late aughts it would have probably been on my list of shows that i was definitely watching because it, it, it most certainly follows the kind of the kind of show that i'd be into like you know like where there's kind of a larger narrative and mm. mythology oh you know what actually I sc scratch that, scratch that. I'm mm. a complete liar. I'm a liar. <laughs> like I just My lied. Liar. I just spent, I just spent the past five minutes lying to you. All. I believe it. Like fully, <laughs> just fully fibbing, 100% fib you, lie. Because you didn't used to like. You watched the whole shows. thing. Yeah, we know. No, no. I watched. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched X Files. I did watch X Files. You watched X Files. I watched X Files. I was a part of that whole thing of people being into X Files. You're right. Like that was it. And so now that I think back on it, probably talking to my friend about Buffy was probably even in the context of like, how does it compare to X Files, though? And and and, <laughs> and, and 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 I do remember him being like, "It's the best thing. It's just it's it's you can't it's just, it's you like." Is the best thing. I was like, really? I loved X Files though. That was something that I was watching during the '90s. It was the outlier. It was the only television show that I was watching. Definitely, 100%. I'm not lying about that. Definitely not lying about that. You know what I think well, it I is? Have... I think it's the title, like the you know Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Buffy. Like people hear that title mm -hmm. and they just kind of write it off because it it's, it doesn't. It's not like a title you would really take seriously or if they were yeah. familiar with the movie and they didn't like the movie they probably yeah. thought they wouldn't like the show but to our benefit john you not watching this back when it was on we get to all hear your reactions now exactly. which has been very entertaining for us that are fans of the show yeah it's, it's... you try to predict and react to this along with the other people who have not seen it but also you're funny. you're impressed though i mean come on my predictions are pretty good they're pretty well, some, good. Sometimes, sometimes they're good. Well, you're you're like sometimes many of them. Yeah, I get to nail sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're like the sheer volume. I mean, come on, like, like yeah, yeah, it's true. If I if <laughs> I when, you, when you've got nine characters predicted to becoming vampires, you're gonna be you're gonna be right point. about something. <laughs> but come on, when I said Wait. when I when I said this is a Bride of Frankenstein episode, everybody who watched the show was like. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you had this one. So John, who do you think is going to be a vampire? You were oh, one. Cordelia, Cordelia is going to be a vampire. Cordelia is going to be a vampire. She like her her face is begging for that prosthetic prosthesis. <laughs> it's just saying. It's just saying. Uh, Giles too. Giles's forehead. Giles' forehead was meant. For, Giles's forehead was meant for that prosthesis. Um, Giles. Cordelia, uh -huh. um, Xander. I think Xander might. Xander? I think he's Xander might, Rachel but you know he's 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 the, he's at the, the bottom of the list. Willow, no, no, they they wouldn't do that to Willow. And also, she she doesn't her 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 bone structure doesn't it doesn't it doesn't beg for the prosthesis the way that some of the others do. Miss so Carolyn, um, the actors and and looking at their bone structure, like depending, and that's your determination. You think they were casting for <laughs> the bone structure? Um, I know the WB um, executives were. Um, uh, I think that uh, I think that um, definitely Cordelia is just I mean it's it's a it's a no brainer she's a vampire period um, I think that Giles is going to be a vampire I think that that's I don't know why it just feels like I can just see the teeth I can see him going <laughs> at some I point, think you're mixing you know? him up with his Ted Lasso like character there, John. Um, Ted Lasso character of him. His Ted Lasso oh, yeah. character is not. Yeah, he's the he's like the villain. He's like the villain in Ted Lasso. Oh my gosh, he's um, so good. Oh, um, look at his British ass getting getting gigs. I'm proud of him. I need right? to look yeah. up yeah. Ted Lasso and see that. Oh, don't watch it. Watch it with us. It's just so good, and you have to watch it with us. 
<laughs> Somebody got to get me that Apple TV. No, I'm serious. It's just, it's I'll, so uh, good. If we're going to do it as a watch, I'll wait. Yeah, yeah I'm holding it, off yeah. to watch Ted Lasso and Lost with you all. Yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. seen yeah. Lost yet Ted either, so... No, oh, yeah, Lost is good. I mean, like I blogged. I I was a Lost blogger, and and I'm uh, like he I was a logger. I was a logger. Yes, <laughs> I was a yes. <laughs> I was a Canadian logger. No, I was I was a full fledged Lost blogger, and like created memes. Chris remembers. Yes, Chris I remembers. do. I used to read um, the blog. I was so into it. I was so into it. And I, I, I think, I mean, I'm not like, this is not tooting my own horn or anything. I really truly believe it. it. Objectively speaking, objectively speaking, I would be a very good guide for folks. Chris, you read John's blog? Yeah. Well, so way back in the days, long ago, John was on MySpace. That's where I first came across him when, after seeing Brian on Gilmore Girls. And then he promoted his little blog for Lost when Lost came out, and when he started watching it, I should say. I think you started it after the first season, or yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I started wa- I started watching it like maybe season season. I want to say that I started it in season two, and so. But you pr- but you promoted your new website that you'd put together for it, and it, you did. It was really good. It was interesting to read. And the comments on each of your posts were also very it was, interesting to read. It Is was this basically still something we can we can read now. Unfortunately, not because it's a long story. But but I forgot. I, I completely forgot. I forgot to pay my domain name. John Sheev also remembers your blog, by the way. Sheev remembers it. He he used to walk, he used to read it. Um, it, my blog had a lot of remarkus in it it had a lot of the same thing like i would blog about the show like i would blog my analysis of the show and then the comments of the blog were like a whole conversation of us just like like breaking it down like what's going on like why don't i agree with that i agree with that you know all this kind of stuff and and i used to do like all kinds of weird fun little games i used to create memes um like like all kinds of stuff. I, you, the the show is very conducive to like. I think you like, drew some maps and things too. Yeah, like while. it's very conducive to like to like mapping and and riddle figuring out and taking screenshots of episodes and then like looking at the background and you know trying. It's like it's really really fun for all that kind of stuff. So like every episode was just like like people would come to the blog just to see like what what ridiculous thing i was analyzing that you know was just probably too you know it was too nitpicky for most people to analyze it but i was like analyzing it and it was just a lot of fun it was a lot of fun fun for me to read because you're like looking up things and talking about things that i wasn't thinking oh yeah (laughs) i was like i I was really exactly like like people were not thinking that deep like they they were just like i'm just having fun and i'd be like did you know that in ancient greece there was a (laughs) you know like like, you know there was a mythological character who was named and you know nine times out of ten or 99 times out of 100, you know, that the writers did not in any way intend for what I was finding in the show. Uh, but it was still really, really fun and, and very mappable show. So you could like map it, map things out. One of the things that I did late in the series was I did um, a, a, a New York subway style map of the island of lost so it looked it was the island of lost but it was drawn it was designed in the style of a subway map of like a new york new york subway map with each season of the show being a different subway line like a different color with different stops on the line being different things that happened in the episode at different places on the island um, and That's that was awesome. cool. It was cool, and it went viral. It's like the it's like the only thing that I can like kind of point to as like the only the only thing that I created that like went full fledged viral. Meaning like the next day, there were like over a million people had seen it. I may have read your blog only to source information to play the arg because oh, that right. is what I was super into. I have notebooks full of notes and information. Yeah, um, I was I was super geeky about all that kind of stuff. I just love I just loved it. I just really loved it. And it just got, you know, it, that show is really important to me because because it really 
it, it really shaped how I thought about narrative and how I thought more, more than narrative, it, it really opened my eyes to how much fans have become a part of the show itself and how important fandoms are to the narrative and to largely the success of the show itself because that show was just as much all of that conversation that happened in between episodes between the fans like you know in between airings of the episode it was just as much that as it was the episodes themselves and that really just that that really like changed changed me like it like really like like changed how i thought about storytelling and and um and that was what i wanted to write like i wanted to write stuff like that that you know things that were that specifically were designed to involve the fans rather than make the fans passive particip or passive viewers i wanted i wanted audiences to like join me and actually be my partners in this and and because of how much i felt like i was a partner of the writers of Lost. Diane and, and posted a link of your map, John, in the no spoiler Buffy chat. Oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah, and and, and so uh, I so like I said, not tooting my own horn or anything. Of course, I'm proud of it, but I do really think that I will be a very good guide. I will be like I will be like Hunter and Chris level guide for Lost as they are for. for You'll Buffy. be more Those Hunter level. Hunter's a little bit tonight. more into into that style of of deep diving into the show and I'll, I'll tell you guys he he did excellent guys for it because i i read that stuff back then and uh yeah you don't have to toot your own horn john Sheep and i'll do it for you we'll tell everybody yeah. how great you are lost it was, <laughs> that, awesome. it was a lot of fun i love it i wish i could read it but then there's also um oh there she probably did a, 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 a like posted a small version i have a, a big like huge version that you can like zoom in on I did that before the last season, so it never got the last season. I always said I would do the last season at some point, but I didn't end up doing it. Maybe so maybe that's what I will do. It I will I will actually maybe redesign that like a new version with that final season in there as well. Um, but Ted Lasso is something different. <clears throat> Ted Lasso is just a very special show. It is a very special, beautiful, beautiful, rewatchable, like just, just love, just lovely, lovely show. Um, with characters that you will just fall in love with, and and it's a it's a wonderful show to watch with other people, and I can't wait I can't cannot wait to watch it with with Remarcus. Sorry, to Anthony switch Stewart gears. heads in it, which is why I referenced it. The guy who plays Giles, and I was saying like that mm. character is his evil version of Giles. <laughs> yes. So sorry to switch head, switch gears real quick, but I just wanted to know did anybody look up the actor who plays Xander on Google? Oh, don't well, do it yet. none of the people who <laughs> haven't <laughs> watched it are gonna Google. We don't. We don't really talk about. No, don't do that then. Stuff. I'm just like you know, don't do that because then they'll tell you what happened. Yeah, don't. Well, don't Google anything about anyone because then you'll start getting like notifications for things. Via, right. Yeah. Via don't. Them. We're trying to so, thing, so. the spoiling. <laughs> yeah. And if you, but if also you, you don't like that's a whole different show. conversation for a different yeah. time. It. Yeah, of course, but. I'll just say this. It will definitely give you clues on why I'm like, ill, Xander. <laughs> just clues. No spoilers. Oh, no spoilers. My just... goodness. Now I want to Google him. I already yeah, did enough trouble. You can't trouble. say that in front of Kendra. <laughs> <laughs> Kendra, if we tell you to Google him, you will not, right? Um, no, I'm she's still going to Google it. <laughs> Oh, remember how great you were in like not watching ahead, like for yeah, Buffy. Don't I do know. it, Kendra. <laughs> do it. You will. Christmas. You will enjoy the show a lot more by not doing that. I and love. I will send you kernels to not look him up, Kendra. Ben, <laughs> Jet, ben, Jet, ben. So, uh, so back to basically what we all concluded was that this was a fun Monster of the Week episode to watch. This it was, was very engaging. This was a this was a really fun monster of the week episode. It was very goofy, like super campy, very silly. Um, some of it seemed like it was meant to be silly, but some of it 
did not seem like it was meant to be silly, mm -hmm. seemed like it was meant to be sincere, but time has made it silly. And that's okay too. <laughs> you know, like that's totally fine. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I was super engaged and I don't know if that was because the writing, you know, beneath all that was, you know, was tight enough that it kept, kept my attention or if it, it's just really fun to watch something that goofy with a bunch of friends. I think it's both. It's both. Yeah. I was going to say it's both like the things that in the show that hold up really, really hold up well. And the things that don't, you're like, eh. but the campiness just is consistent throughout. Like the Good. things that you laughed about are the things that we laughed about then too. It just, yeah. <laughs> So oh, wait a second, is Sheev here? Yeah, is he's not on us? the main yeah. Oh my that's gosh, Sheev. She posted a link in the Sheev. chat. That, that's, oh, why, that's why I was saying he, he was... I, uh, I, he I totally forgot. your horn for you too. Oh, okay. John, look in the chat, he posted a link. Yes, I just noticed. That That's how I knew that, it, that, that he was here. I was like, what, Sheev? Yes. Oh my. Oh my gosh. That's right. That. So you did. She, she found the bigger one, right? The 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 high res one. I'm... Yeah. That they, that that's definitely the high res one. That that's definitely the high res one. Yeah. That he found. That's cool. Um, yeah. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. When we do Lost, I. That's my thing. That will be like the sort of the prize at the very end. I'm going to redo that map. I'm gonna do it again because I lost the original. I lost Maybe the original. Maybe you should make one file. of Sunnydale. It'd be interesting to see your version of Sunnydale. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's like. Show. But see, that's the, that is that is fandom, you know. Like that is fandom. I didn't, you know, uh, that whole subway map thing. Like it really just came out of me naturally, just because of how geeked out I was about that show. And that is the thing, fans, you know, like I've said it before, that like fans obsess about like the like weird things, like little things that, you know, that a casual viewer doesn't doesn't really care about, you know, and yeah. and and that's uh, yeah, that would be that would be fun to do something for for um for Buffy. Actually, I have a I have another idea for Buffy that I wanted to do that I that that I think would be really fun. That's a sto that's a story. I I wanted to do maybe Steph I'm I'm going to I'm going to just say this and if Steph's listening, maybe she'll maybe she'll get inspired to want to help on this. But I was thinking of doing like a story that was that was interactive using like the Instagram, like, you know, yes, no thing, or, you know, not, not the, like the this or that, you know, or like where you kind of like, pick one thing or the other, like kind of. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. To use that um, and for it to be a multi panel story of a Buffy fight. And each panel is another like room in the fight, and you have to pick. Um, you have to pick oh, certain objects to um, certain objects as the stake in that room, like you know, like like oh, the, you know, the so so make so it's like a, the yeah, so it's like a, so so like each one chair. is a little piece, yeah, so each one is a little piece of fan fiction, right? So each one like you know, it's like like the image would be like like a like a cool cartoon style. Like in that maybe in that remarkist style, that like flat style, like like of a of a particular room, and there's like a little piece of text that like that that you know gives you the gist of the story in that room. The story really being nothing more than a fight. So it's just like every piece of text is just like you know that is the explanation of the fight itself. And each one kind of ending with a choice, like a choose your own adventure, except that there's no real choose your own adventure. It just goes to the next panel, but, but does have some degree of interaction in which you have to pick which, which of the, of the two, um, you want, like, you know, do you grab the, the, the leg of this chair or do you grab the pool stick, you know? And so then people get to choose which one and then it takes you to the next frame and then the, you know, the next part of the fight and, and, you know, as she crashes through a window and now she's out in the courtyard, you know, and, and talk, talks, talks a little bit about like some of the, the fight narrative there and then ends with a, you know, do you grab the branch or do you grab the, like 
the little little garden stake, you know, and you keep going. You do that a few times until until the fight ends. I think that that could be really fun. It and then, fun. and then it could, and then and then you have like a a little like, I, like I wish that there was a way that you could get all of that data to do something at the end. That would be the only that would be the only thing that I would I would. I would, it, I would love to have happen, but just trying to think of like interesting ways to use some of those, some of those Instagram social tools. Like I've looked through them and trying to like kind of brainstorm like fun little interactive things to do with the, with the fans. Um, I have a, I have a quick question hmm. um, about how everyone felt about the acting with the actors on this episode. I, has anyone noticed? No, I mean, if felt... watching, like Buffy, like the acting is more expressive than like what we see in recent shows. Oh yeah, I mean for sure that. But that was just the. But that's just the style of acting of that of that era. You know, I mean, like. I miss it. Te- television acting has in almost in recent years has gotten to be much more filmic. But back then, it was much broader. The I think the general I, yeah. consensus was that you needed that like over the top emotional soap opera style acting in order for people to really dig it. And and now it's the opposite. Like people want like the most realistic depictions of acting and story. And you know, like yeah, the man. acting is just as big and broad as the actual writing is like the sum of the writing in this is just like, Oh no, that would Mm -hmm. never fly in a story today. Not, not because it's like in any way controversial, just like, it's just way too broad. Like that's just not realistic in the slightest bit. We can totally pick it apart. Um, But back then it didn't really matter. Like that was sort of, you know, you know, that sort of soap opera style narrative was fun, you know? I, I, I feel think, like, um, oh, go ahead, Coral. Go ahead, Coral. I, keep saying I was just going to say that. I was just going to say, like, because I'm realizing how much more expressive the acting was in that era, it probably explains why it was easier for me to get into real life TV shows after watching cartoon shows. But now I just get bored of watching a lot of recent TV shows because of the muted expressions of acting. I feel that's like, why I don't like movies. But yeah. I feel like, like, like John said, it's more film style now. Like the the direction has definitely changed, you know, Mm -hmm. like it was TV directing and they didn't really focus on the subtle, like intimate moments as much in the soft, you know, like the realistic stuff. It was very like over the top, but I do feel like with the show, it, as it progresses, it does get more modern, I guess. Yeah. More realistic. I'm I'm going to, I'm going to bet not to get like all super so super social or anything or no i am gonna get super social um but like uh uh, one thing that i will say is that like you know because television you know has historically and still is you know it has shaped the way people interact in the real world and i will say that like when that when most of your television is really melodramatic I think that that probably seeps into society a bit, right? Are we like, getting sociological? Yeah, why not? <laughs> yes. Don't get me started. I've been thinking about this for the past fifteen years. It's out of. Don't get me started. But I'm but now, but now but now like you know I mean like 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 look at like you know like we've I mean we've we've talked about it in, like in terms of like you know actual narratives themselves like what people were interested in you know, like in terms of the narratives back in like, you know, the the time of Leave it to Beaver, for example, you know, like these sort of family based dramas, but like we haven't really talked about it in as it as it um, applies to actual performance style, because if all you ever see are characters on television, like over emoting, that would l- likely that would sort of, in some way, it would carry over into real life. You'd have a lot more people in the world over emoting. And I just Weeds think that like, example. I, think, I think that now 
with television so much more understated and performances so much more realistic, I just wonder how that has changed people's actual interaction with one another, like in the real world, because I'm, I'm sure that, that the over emotion of performances in like the 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s television, I'm, I'm absolutely, I mean, I, I mean, I can't know for sure because I don't, I, I don't have the data or anything, but I have to imagine that it, that it, it, it somehow shaped how people interacted with one another in the real world day to day. And now in just the past 20 years max that we've had like television being really, really, really like all about ultra realism and, you know, performances being really realistic and super understated, I, I would have to imagine that that has also to a degree that has found its way into the real world and how people are interacting with one another. I don't really know where I'm going with that, but I'm just, it's something that I've thought about. I get what you're saying. I, I mean, honestly, John, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, I can see that, especially with younger um, people that are maybe, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, it's like, there's some, like my neighbor's kids, for instance, spend a lot of time either playing video games or watching TV. Okay. Or iPads, okay. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. I got it. I got it. So they they kind of act the way of the things that they see and do when they're outside at the pool in the summer, uh, interacting with each other. And it's so I get what you're saying. But 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 he but here's the thing. This this is the part that I'd forgotten about that I that I that you just reminded me of. Back in the in the seventies, eighties, and nineties, young people, <laughs> young people, young people were only watching television or mostly watching television, right? And now all of these like really like you know filmic shows, this like filmic television that's super realistic and whatnot. That's not like their audience is not young people. Young people are playing video games where all that melodrama still does exist. Yep. <laughs> so they act uh... differently to each other or they, or they like play fight and do things like that. And then, I don't know, it's just, I feel like it's, it depends on like what you're doing. Like some people really pick up on like the way they might be into a show. So they all start talking like the characters in a show, for instance the slang or whatever things like that i'm gonna dis kind of i'm gonna disappoint Car carl i know who i know wants to keep the sociology conversation going i have to actually run but i mean i didn't even start it i know i know that's <laughs> what i mean like i start i like i started it and now you i'm i, I, ha I have to it, jump but but for but i'm very 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 happy to hear your voice again carl like just so you know i was Me thinking too. about you i was it's actually thinking about you Stuff. yesterday yeah i was thinking about you yesterday because we were talking about mementos and we were talking about like i i created this new this new thing where like people's collections are are actually like are, are like there's an algorithm that i created that like scores people's memento collections and we were talking about how nikki's collection is like really she's got a really high score and then everyone was saying oh that's largely because she's got one of those car one of those carl mementos from that <laughs> past dog which were like there's only like three of them and they're like super freaking high density and i was like oh yeah and then i was like gosh where is that guy and i hope he comes back I so i'm really glad to hear you by, so oh okay thank you regina that's i'm great. so glad to thank you thank you regina that's great hey, john can i ask you a quick question before you go and everybody who hasn't watched this yeah, sure. We're only two episodes into season two. And I want to ask this on right now because yeah. I think that the next few upcoming episodes and Hunter probably agree is where it really, really takes off. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like these first two episodes are already better than season one? They feel just like season one to me. Okay. Okay. I mean well, I mean like I mean like first of all episode one just felt like an extension of the last episode of of season mm -hmm. one because it was right. just it was just like T M M too much master. Ah. Um, I <laughs> 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 
Um, there was just too much master for my taste. Um, this second episode is just about as goofy as the goofiest stuff from season one. So, but that's okay. I enjoyed season one, so I'm I'm good. Um, but if like if things start to really transform here, I know that this is the season that everyone has said is the season where things really like change for the series, and I can't wait. I can't wait because I already love it. I mean, I love the series. I think it's yeah, fun. Like, I love all the characters, and it's great. And I love a, watching it with um, you all. There's a uh, a see a, a episode in this season that I say is kind of like the Game of Thrones. Like before you watch that episode, you're like, "Oh, sweet summer child, we have one of those in the oh, season." Right. Two. <laughs> like, yes, <laughs> that's another one. That's another show. Like even though I'm not, you know, even though I have my I have my issues with that show with uh, with Game of Thrones, that's another show. We're gonna wait because I know that there's not a lot of you know at this point the 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 taste for for watching that show is not really high when but that's time. another show that that I genuinely think you know because there is that one episode and it's in season 1 and it, and it's just it's in season 1 that's the good thing about it it's in the season 1 and when it happens when that se- when that episode happens anybody who's seen it can can vouch when that episode happens that's it. You're done. You watch. You're. You will not stop. You will watch the whole thing unless you have some issue. There. There's some. There's some aspects to the series that angered people later in the series, like some narrative stuff and some some like you know trigger some triggering things that happen later in the season that that did have people be like, I'm done with the show. But um, but just in terms of the show being boring like you know there are a lot of people who are like oh i tried that show that thing is boring you know and all i i I always like what point did you stop because Mm -hmm. if the answer was they stopped before that episode yeah sure i got that like the show (laughs) kind of needs if you get to that episode you're done like that's it you're done like you you will watch every episode of the entire series and i know because i was feeling that same way i was like i was not from the the very first episode i was hooked and i can guide anyone through that entire show see hunter it took me about three episodes before i was just like oh no chris i know you i can we we will get there i no, no, i've seen seen the whole show i've seen it all i love the show overall I'm just saying it took me about three episodes and then I was finally like, okay, I've gotten past all the introductions and things. Now let's go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the first season is a lot of exposition. It's a lot of exposition. That's my favorite um, season. But anyway, I mean, bottom uh, line is, bottom line is that show, that, that series is, is quite good. And, and it does things that are, it does, that, that series does things that, have defined the way that people do things in television now like that like game of thrones was the first to do certain things it was that a mini now, movie every week it was a mini but, movie every week. no just in terms of like <laughs> narrative <laughs> just na- narratively oh. what what happened in that series now writers go into rooms and they pitch shows that like that have that stuff in it exactly that wouldn't they would never have done beforehand because Every studio would have been like, "Oh no, you can't do that." Yeah, and the oh, no, format of it too, the way they lay out, like, yeah, yeah, like, like it, just, like they just, like, no one would have ever, ever, ever bought your show, and so no one would ever have done that, and so, but because they did it and it was successful, now everybody does it. It's the same thing with Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad broke rules that like no one had really done before and they did it in in a way and then it was successful and then suddenly every writer in Hollywood suddenly is like, they everybody like has to, has to like reference it or, you know, have a character or, you know, that has some of that, you know, that, that, tone or or things happen and you know it's just that's just the way it is that's i mean that's in general how that, things evolve. like just have a comment like a quick tidbit about just what's going on in industry and especially like schematic industry and just with film and stuff is that like what you say is correct you know they'll take this one thing and they'll all go forward to that one thing especially if it's american made i know that people believe that like a lot of people want us to make squid game but honestly they're like okay well how about we just take it and make it american like they don't want us to like make it as a squid game because it's korean but like um 
that's the thing that really is exhausting when trying to pitch stuff and put yeah. things out there as a screenwriter because you're talking to a whole bunch of different people that are screenwriters that are all talking about the same stuff. And then you're talking to a whole bunch of people who are like producers and stuff that are all talking about the same stuff. They kind of bubble themselves and it is really sad to watch, but it kind of makes it a little more entertaining for me because I'm like, okay, well, I've watched a lot of anime and y'all don't even know what anime is, which is shocking to me. But hey, I grew up in the Midwest. You grew up in the South. Let's see if we can make it work. You know, like, it'll be little things like that. Of, like, I'll try and pitch it in and poke my head through and be like, oh, well, what if we do this, that, and the fourth? And, you know, sometimes I'll stick out. And the craziest thing is that I won't even think that I'm breaking a rule or something. But for them, I'm breaking a rule because they're all moving the same way as what would happen if you went to high school and everyone's moving the same way. You know, you go to work and everyone's moving the same way. And you're the different person wearing a whole peacock suit. So yeah, like it definitely like being the the odd one out really will help you succeed and go far, especially with uh, the shows that have came out and succeeded with that. That has set the tone of like all TV shows today, like Stranger Things, Breaking Bad, Orange Is the New Black, Mad Men, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Gilmore Girls, you know stuff like. That. Are you are you watching the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? Yes. Because I feel like, like that show, you, uh, like because so for me, so much of the Marvel, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, what I what I love about it, the part that keeps me hooked, is all of that industry perseverance and all of the like stuff that she has to deal with and push through and whatnot. This season in particular, I thought had like a really interesting turn that I think kind of applies to what we're talking about here, right? Because she begins season four with this, like, I'm going to break the wheel, right? Like a full Khaleesi style, like, you know, I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to be the, the the one who changes things. And the, the, the difficulty, of course, is that you can't actually change things unless you're inside. And you can't get inside <laughs> unless you actually do things their way. So you ha you have to so that's like that's the difficult part about it is that like is that is that in order for Game of Thrones to have been able to do what it did in order for Breaking Bad to have been able to do what it did the artists involved in that actually spent many years doing what everybody is supposed to do and and playing the game and being nice and not ruffling feathers and and um they pay their and dues they pay their dues and what you often then see is that then this big change will happen right like you know some big new paradigm shift right oh now we're all doing this to our main characters or now we're all all of our main characters need to have this personality trait and then that becomes the new standard that becomes the new playing by the rules and now you have to go in and pitch that kind of stuff even though that kind of stuff is no longer the new cool breaking bounds type thing there's nothing breaking the wheel in going in and pitching a walter white anti-hero anymore that's a very game you know? of thrones comment breaking the wheel isn't that from that or yeah that's that, that's why i said khaleesi style she said <laughs> i want to break the wheel yeah uh, yeah and i mean when i think about that um <laughs> sorry because we're literally on the book if i said they talking about Maisel, but just like a little thing to mention about Maisel season four is that the biggest thing that I noticed with season four and what she does just to move through, not to give any spoilers for anybody in here who didn't watch it with for Marcus, um, is that um, the whole time she was like, I want to break the industry. I'm going to do it different. Why can't we do it different? But she was moving out of fear. And I'm glad that they made that point in season four and that they wrapped it all up in season four like that because I've met a lot of people in Los Angeles who go into film and things like that, or try to go into film and think like that, but they're navigating off of fear. And that's a really big thing that can block you from achieving that greatness as well, because you got to pay your dues, but on top of like, 
usually like paying your dues is just learning the rules of it all because we're not a lot of people are not born into that industry and Maisel's not born into that industry like her whole family's like why are you doing that comedian it doesn't even pay any money like why don't you just become a secretary you know so it's definitely different for her whole environment of people around her so that's something where if they say you have to pay your dues it's like you have to put yourself through the work you have to like you know kneel and grovel and like dig through the dirt so that you understand not only the rules and like how much hard work it takes to get up there but also you can talk that language with the people who have done it so and that's what she had to do but at the same time she got rejected not not even just once but like twice and this time like the first time in her career of getting rejected like that uh, to get rejected like that, it was with her career, something that she really loves dearly, more than her actual husband. So it hit her a lot harder than like what happened when her husband rejected her in the first season. So I think that was really, really good and really, really great way to write out how that all works with someone trying to break it into the entertainment industry and especially with comedy because it is a lot. It is, And it's still um, something that people still deal with today. So... Sorry to go on a tangent, but yeah, like season four of Mrs. Maisel, honestly near and dear to my heart because it, it touched on some truth there because with every comedy, there's a bit of truth. I love this. Yeah. All right. I got to run. Everybody, this was fantastic. Another great, great discussion. I'm, I love our Buffy discussions. <laughs> they get, Aren't they, they get great? Deep. <laughs> they're they great. Get deep. They, it's, it's fun because they're, they, they always, <laughs> they, all, they typically begin from just like, from just like laughing about the silliness and and then you know and then they got really super fascinating um all right so tomorrow uh we dive into our our third show for slate three we're gonna do the premiere of bunheads um tomorrow and then on saturday morning we're gonna rewatch that as well as watching season two um that will those will be our that will have all three of our shows for slate three running and uh and then on sunday uh we've got a big community meeting to discuss our big june celebration month which is our big anniversary celebration month we're going to be doing a big 30 day 30 day event essentially 24 hours a day seven days a week we're going to have programming constantly so people can really just like at any hour of the day or night, they should be able to log log in and see somebody in Remarkus. That's exciting. So, talking yeah. about something. And we're going to talk about events and guests and all kinds of stuff. And also I'm going to have um, a little bit of information to share about the upcoming app, the new app that we're going to be transitioning to uh, sooner than you think. Um, uh, hopefully, <laughs> um, uh, and that will be really great. So I'm hoping that um, that everyone who is at least here tonight will be able to make it. And if not, um, we will be able to download you on all of that information. And what time is that at, John? It's 11 a.m. Pacific time, so that would be 2 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, thanks. 1, 1 p.m. your time. Um, so uh yeah i think that that's, that's bunheads that. will be a saturday show after this week though right correct so this this is the this is the the only week where we're gonna have a friday a friday slate show uh starting next week our friday is open for community to schedule into um for primetime hours and our bunheads are going our bunhead watches are going to be two episodes at 8 a.m and 9 a.m Pacific time um, each each weekend. So we're going to be doing two two episodes per week on that is, same day. Is that going to be done before the June? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. It's going to be done a couple weeks before, actually. So we'll have like I think I a think week Buffy's or two. the end of it. Hunter, yeah, but Buffy. Yeah, but Buffy will be the last. Will be the last show to end the the final week of Buffy. Is like every day we're going to be doing a Buffy episode, um, uh, to lead us there, and and then I think that leaves us with, I think two weeks, maybe one, two weeks before June first. So, um, so we'll have like you know a week of like of like prep for June first, but 
but yeah, I mean, the idea is that is that June is gonna be is gonna be bonkers, is gonna be bonkers. Um, we should be in the app by then. Not should be. I mean, we'll be in the app by then. Um, and uh, and you know, and so we'll be able to like promote the app and promote all of the stuff that's happening in the app. Um, and uh, and you know, and I'll. I'll in the in the months leading up to that we'll be working on like what all those events are and scheduling and how we divvy up all of that all of that hosting and special guests and all of that kind of stuff so we'll talk about that this weekend and that will be fun i'm excited yay that's exciting <laughs>